my mind warming up. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> okay, we're recording now. Welcome back, everybody. Hey, Kate. Hi. To our legions of fans. Thanks for being that was, here. That was exciting. Uh, I don't think we've ever opened an episode with you doing la 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 la. So now we have. Now we have. That's great. Um, on my bucket so, list for 2024. Yeah. Yodel on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. I mean, I think we could maybe find you another podcast and maybe there's one about yodeling that you could just go and yodel. All they the wouldn't time. want me. <laughs> You're not a great yodeler? Uh, I think I'm not great at a lot of things and you nobody else wanted to do this in our office. So you were stuck with me and uh, now you'll never get rid of me. Mm. Well, because yeah. you have said, I think on our very first episode, you like hearing your own voice. I did. Yep. That's okay. I think everybody likes hearing it. We hit like, didn't we hit um, a thousand away, downloads? So I can't see him. Yeah, a thousand downloads. I saw yep. that come through on Slack, uh, I believe. So that was great. I yeah. uh, don't know, remember how many episodes it took us to get there, but apparently, uh, last, whatever, last week or two weeks ago's episode. That's probably was like, the I mean, have, we haven't done, don't, I don't know. How many have we done? Many episodes we haven't we have done a hundred episodes. And which would be no, like a hundred no. downloads per. So like maybe is it two hundred downloads? downloads per. We've done forty episodes. Fifty, forty, forty-two. Okay. <laughs> Zach's giving us fingers. He's holding up forty-two, and he got the uh, iPhone balloons or I'm Mac sorry. balloons or whatever that came up. Uh, I'm sure we'll get confetti at some point. Okay. So and I think though that a thousand divided by a hundred would only be ten per, because it's. A hundred is a tenth of a Leave thousand. Me alone. So, I mean, that's not bad. It's building. <laughs> um, and hopefully people are enjoying what we're talking about. Uh, speaking of what we're talking about, um, before we get into the cocktail, uh, today uh, we're going to be talking with our good friend Jamie, one of our SEO folks um, on the team. And we're going to talk specifically about SEO when you're redesigning your website. Uh, it can be pretty tricky. You can do it wrong and tank everything, or you can do it like right. With us. And, well, and with we'll us, do yeah. it right for you. <laughs> I mean, and even if you do it right, you do everything right, you still get a little bit of a dip, but it comes back stronger than it was before if you've done everything right. So Jamie's going to tell us how to do everything right. No pressure for her <laughs> uh, as she's sitting there in our virtual green room uh, watching and listening yeah. to everything we're going. So that's going to be exciting. Um, I don't know if this cocktail has anything to do with websites or is something Jamie would ever drink. Oh, um, no one should drink this. It's called a it's called a death flip. And normally, I love a flip. I am right, all about a, full a whole egg, egg a whole in a cocktail, egg. a whole raw egg. Yeah. It's like a oh god, but like an it egg makes nog. it foamy. I know you get like no, see, it I, makes it. It's like creamy. It's so good. we've done this before. I hate eggnog cannot stand eggnog now an eggnog flavored cake maybe Mm. i mean i don't know so really you just like heavy cream and nutmeg (laughs) yes yeah sure yeah i mean that's i mean like that's what it is yeah a trace leches cake perfect sounds great yeah eggnog not interested Mm. um at all now i did put raw eggs go ahead I i was trying to think of i've had another um Another flip that was like a riff on eggnog, but it was like slightly different. And it was, I think Let's I was Zach in Nashville. That up. He can Google that thing and figure it out. Yeah. Um, Zach spent time in Nashville. He, he might know what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, he'll have to dig around and see if he can find it. Right. Yeah, no, I mean, raw egg, last time I had that in a beverage was Orange Julius in the Oh, 80s. stop. No. Oh, it was fantastic. The, know, the, the egg makes it all creamy and wonderful, mm-hmm. Caitlin. Yeah. Yep. Like your flip drink. Although this, this flip is, is a crime against God and man. Wow. It's, a, it's one ounce of Blanco tequila, a half ounce of yellow chartreuse, a half ounce of Jägermeister. This is where it goes south for me. A dash of simple syrup and a whole egg. So the idea, I don't even know I can it say it. It doesn't go south with the chartreuse? You hate chartreuse. It's, it's like on its way. That's like okay. southwest. And then it's on its Jägermeister way and then just is over plummets, the cliff with just... the Jaeger. I don't <laughs> like, I can't. 
It's just for those who are who didn't hear it, Caitlin's gagging just a little bit, it's trying like to read this. the rest <laughs> of the ingredients and talk about this cocktail. So the idea um, of I think because Yeg is like such a polarizing spirit aperitif, if you will. It's a polarizing bit. Um, yeah, it, and it makes me think of like Jaeger bombs in college, which mm -hmm. also then caused the like the physical visceral reaction. But then the idea of like mixing that with a raw egg, it's like I I can picture the yolk. I can't talk about it. Okay, so basically you just combine it all, <laughs> shake it, drain it into a glass, a sour glass, and then garnish with nutmeg. So um, let me share a little bit about how this abomination came to be. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think abomination is probably a great word for it. Mm -hmm. um, so this is from Melbourne, Australia, uh, Melbourne. which is interesting you have to, say, to me. Melbourne. Melbourne. <laughs> you gotta, yeah, you got to. I don't do that Australia. part of Australia well. I do sort of the upper coast better, but. Um, I also just do not have a good Australian accent. I can't even pretend to pull it. <laughs> um, but this first appeared on a menu at the Black Pearl in Melbourne in 2010. So it's not that old. It's a 14-year-old well, 14 drink, I guess. <laughs> uh, can't drive yet, though. Um, but they listed none of the ingredients. Uh, if you asked what's in the drink, they wouldn't tell you what's in the drink. That right there just tells me this thing is probably Yeah, that's awful. a big old no thank you. Um the only thing was on the description that says you don't want to meet this cocktail in a dark alley. Oh, God, I think yeah. I would agree with that. So, I mean, but we've all been out with friends who would be like, I feel like this is something if Jesse saw on a drink menu, he would go, OK, so like no ingredients. You don't want to meet it in a dark alley. Yeah, I'll play. Bring it. Bring mm -hmm. it. Let's let's try it. I we all Zach know Zach is too. doing it. Oh, no, yeah, like Zach, Zach is definitely totally doing it. it. Um, so a bunch of people, much like Zach and Jesse, stepped up and gave it a try. Um, and they probably wouldn't have done it if they knew the ingredients. Because like you said, you read these ingredients and you're just, it's a gag fest. Like, so not. So um, it is considered a modern classic as a flip. Who so decided the only that? flip. There's bar people who do that, I think. Um they're wrong but yeah versus being i mean most flips are actually classic cocktails right mm -hmm. like they're mm -hmm. older uh cocktails um yeah so this comes from our people the people at punch which i know we've gotten some cocktails from before some cocktail recipes from before not a sponsor or anything it's just a place we go to find interesting <laughs> cocktails and wanted to share that with you because mm -hmm. we're all about calling out like where things come from credit where credit is cite, cite your sources absolutely yes. um i will admit I would try this. There are things in this that make me just not like, we're going to put tequila and a whole egg in a cocktail. That just, no. Like if I said, although, have you done a, a margarita flip? Is that a thing? Can you put a whole egg in a margarita and make it a flip? Does it get a creamy, like, do you I don't taste know. the egg? I think, I, I don't want, I don't think so. I don't think okay. that's a thing that should happen. All right, I'll look up margarita flips later. Yeah, later. tequila oh, flip, tequila flip, tequila. Yeah. I mean, maybe. Okay, I think we've beaten this thing to death. Um, oh, you could do I... an agave flip. Okay. So do you want to know that... what's hilarious? Is that's the third. So it's agave flip, um, maple syrup, Madeira wine, star anise. Why with the anise? Yeah. I'm good with it. Uh, you don't juice, like the black like, licorice, do you? I hate black licorice. Thing. It's awful. Chartreuse it makes me feel Jaeger car sick. Have a black yeah. I love black um, licorice. And then tequila sherry flip. There's no ingredients listed for that. But the third recipe on Google is a death flip. Death flip. Okay. So you can find this on Google. You can also find it on our wonderful notes uh, that producer Zach pulls together for each episode. Um, I think think caitlin we have opportunity to actually end the intro like on time where zach wants us to be why would we ever do that well i feel like we i mean zach's been working really hard so i think we should maybe <laughs> give it to him so we'll wrap this up <laughs> and we'll take a break can't hold me can't hold me down and then we'll be back with jimmy right. and website seo redesign tips Jamie, welcome to this promising, exciting, 
interesting segment of <laughs> CTA podcast. Promise we'll take to good care here. of you. Okay. <laughs> are are you? You can be honest. <laughs> I'm here. We're, and we're in four locations today. It's the first yes. time we've had a four locationer, I think. With Zach four. and his Yeah, new, like four uh, separate zip codes. New apartment <laughs> on the East Coast. Caitlin in Sioux City. I'm in Omaha and Jamie a little bit further north up in Sioux Falls. Yes. So we're all most of us are coming to you from the I twenty nine corridor. <laughs> Uh, Zach is not, uh, but all good, all good. So Jamie, you're talking to us about uh, how not to screw up your SEO when you do a website redesign, right? Basically, yeah. <laughs> well, good, we got the <laughs> right person for the topic today. Nailing it. Okay. Uh, well, I am. I'm curious if you can just kind of give us like a, a brief overview of kind of what you should do and then um, how maybe more specifically those things flow together. Um, yeah, so I kind of would start off first by setting a performance benchmark for your site. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. How do I do that? Do, um, I would look at what's currently um how your site is currently doing those Mm -hmm. metrics there and kind of see what needs improvement and seeing if that is possible with a website redesign. Yeah. Um, And kind of, I guess, get realistic goals for your new (laughs) site. You don't want to do anything too crazy, I would say. Um, And I guess kind of, yeah, like a thousand page views every minute. Right, right. (laughs) you know two percent bounce rate and uh, like none yeah be realistic right. i appreciate that well, right those are, more, those are more site stats right like that's how the site performs itself um from an seo standpoint though are you talking about like keyword rankings like where are you ranking today for things you know where do you want to rank for those things what's not ranking today that you want to rank for with the new site those types of things yeah, and I guess it depends if, like, content changes, too. Like, if you're going to have new content, you're going to have to rank for different keywords and all that type of stuff and change the headlines and meta descriptions and stuff like that. So I guess it just just depends if um, your client changes all the content up or just, like, a couple things. So that's kind of an it-depends answer. Yeah, so you're... I mean, trying to, like, plan as best you can and be realistic about what to expect, I think, is probably a fair kind of first step. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's fair all around on any marketing campaign <laughs> right? or website redesign or TV yeah. ad or anything. Like, being realistic is important. Um, yeah. And basing that off of what's happening today. So whatever you're measuring today have that kind of lock it down and have that as your benchmark because you're going to want it to be better when you're done uh, and over with things. Okay, cool. So you touched a little bit on content, like whether it's changing or not changing. So what do you have to do with the content as you're, so even if you're not changing the content, like, like what do you, or, or if you are changing it either way, what do you need to do to make sure that like things pull better in the future than they are today? Um, well, first, I would probably run a full like website audit. I know there's a lot of tools online that have um, content ideas. Some show you like full blown different ideas, and some show you like a couple things you can tweak in your content. So I think using some tools like that could really help you, kind of tell you where you can grow on on your site currently. So I think that's. Um, a good tool to have and it could also lead to like other inbound links within your site if you think of new content ideas from those tools so i think there's just a lot of opportunities when doing a website audit um and then kind of looking into content ideas that can lead to like mapping out your new site and creating those like categories and sub categories and then like create the overall structure and like the hierarchy of the site so, I mean, it all just kind of, like, flows together. So organizing content can be a big thing. Is stuff in the right yeah. place? Like, you may yep. have everything that you need, but, you know, like, I have 4,000 pieces of paper on my desk. Why I have paper, I don't know. 
Uh, but they could probably all be organized better in folders by topic or that type of thing. Yeah. Same thing with your website, your web pages, yep. all that. Well, yep. I know, like, even in terms of, like, site design, Jesse is militant about the site map and making sure that that's locked in. Militant in, like, the kindest way. <laughs> but, like, locking in the site map because that dictates your url structure it also gives you that content map to say like here's all the things we want to touch on and then here's kind of the buckets that they fit into so in addition to having like your site map planned for that url structure you're also kind of giving yourself the initial content plan too so it's just like it all like you said fits together yeah and then once you come up with that like site map you can kind of see like the navigation more clearly and that's like really important for the user because poor navigation on a website is like the main reason why someone like leaves your page and I know I've definitely done that before if I see a (laughs) website and it's just like awful I'm just like I'm out of here you know so it all just kind of like works together yeah yeah and I think so um that's where we start SEO, right? Is the sitemap stage, like the very, very, very beginning. Because like you said, that's where stuff gets organized and where you understand kind of what's coming. Yep. Okay, I'm looking at the notes and I know what this means, but there's just the word crawl. And I don't think it means like a baby crawls. I don't think it means like a spider crawls, though it could involve robots or spiders. So what's this crawl thing? Yeah, so you'll have to, like, crawl your site, basically, to rediscover, like, the newly designed pages. That way Google can understand what's on your site and what your content means, basically, so the robots can figure everything out and make sure you're ranking and everything like that. So it's important because it increases your, like, visibility, um, targeted audience analytics insights and it's honestly just an overall better user experience there's also a lot of other factors but these are just a few main ones Mm -hmm. i mean i think the other thing you can do a crawl before and after right so yeah you can you can use a tool that does like google does their crawling or bing or whoever you decide to use but um (laughs) but you can also use bing is still out there i know it can happen um (laughs) The um, you can use a tool to crawl it yourself, so you can just see what all the components and stuff are. And I think people would be shocked to see how much stuff is in their site, and how much stuff is like not optimized in their site. Um, and make sure that like you're you're improving that as you go. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's you know, just today. Riley was asking me about one of our client sites. He's like, "Hey, do you know what these orphan pages are?" And I was like, "I don't. Let us find <laughs> out." And I think, I mean, I'm assuming that that came from a crawl. Mm-hmm. That... Yeah, I think we do those as part of SEO maintenance and kind of continuing an SEO program. Occasionally we'll crawl the site because looking for stuff just like that, like, is it supposed to be orphaned? Mm-hmm. Which some stuff is. That's totally fine. But if it's supposed to have a parent, we need to reunite them by announcing it over the loudspeaker in the grocery store. <laughs> I'm a little, it's, it's late in the day. It's a Tuesday. I was on vacation. I've been sick. You just have to deal with me today. I must say though, the vacation tan is still tanning. Like you must have have gotten some color. No, I got zero sun. We were, no, I don't have, this is not a, maybe it's the, it's the camera. The the lighting is working. It's glowing. Okay. Great. Great. Uh, (laughs) Back to SEO. New color. Let's talk about a new a new site structure, shall we? What happens after that? Oh, uh, yeah. So once those site's kind of all designed out by our amazing design team, I go in and we make sure there's like the H1s, H2s, the meta descriptions, image alt text. Um, and then like sometimes I like to just go through the site like I'm a like user and just see if it's you know like if i understand it and if there's anything that needs to be tweaked or if an image is kind of blurry so i kind of look for stuff like that and just think of myself as oh i'm just a visitor so i like to 
go through it like that um and then also make sure like the navigation makes sense and everything like that um and then before the launch um kind of for the redirects you want to like get a list of all the urls and the ones you're keeping and the ones you're no longer keeping so you match the old urls with the new ones and then for the urls you're getting rid of you match that to like the new content it would cover or like similar topics so that's kind of how you would organize those and then upload the list of the redirects i know it's pretty easy through the platform we use so we can just bulk upload that now which is really nice Mm -hmm. and it does take like a few minutes so like don't panic if it doesn't work right away (laughs) basically yep yeah you gotta (laughs) test those panic but only temporarily yeah i usually do (laughs) <laughs> no panic. Uh, yeah, and we can mention the platform. We use HubSpot CMS most of the time. Uh, we've done a lot of WordPress development, and you do need plugins to do redirects on WordPress. HubSpot has it just built in, um, and it's pretty easy to pull together. They also automatically create some redirects. So if you're going from a HubSpot site to and redesigning with their tools and pushing a new site live over top of it um, or updating pages, if a URL changes on that page, it'll do the redirect for you, which is really nice. Um, But yeah, the goal is to have none of those uh, nasty 404 errors, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Ugh, ugly 404 errors. I know. Although I will say, let's just really quickly, there is a special kind of joy that happens when a site has like a customized funny 404 error page. Yep. That like, (laughs) if you're gonna have a 404, at least make it cute. Yeah. I think customized error pages are very important honestly, mm-hmm. because you can show your personality there and people yes. do accidentally end up there. They, a typo will get you there. Even if your site mm-hmm. is pristine and perfect. Perfectly optimized. Exactly. Mm-hmm. All right. So then you, uh, you throw the thing live. Is that what happens next? I see. Yep. You, you launch her and <laughs> then Hope you do the best. <laughs> and hope for the best, basically. But um, then you can, like, do some audits after that to kind of overall check it to make sure, like, you didn't miss anything, you know. Double check your work. Um, look for, like, internal, external links. Like, if there's any, like, missing headlines or content issues, like, run it through an audit quick. So that's what I would do. Yeah. So aside from the stuff the design team does or a proofreader or copy team would do for instance after you launch a site like the seo team is in there doing a whole different set of stuff looking at what's going on um very cool and checking for those 404 errors yep zero if you did everything (laughs) um cool um and yeah so that and that takes like it takes a little bit of time and so like after the site launches there's some things you need to do on the back end like like five ten days it's not a huge amount of time um, so what are the other things you'll do? Like, I think that it looks like there's one other thing you would do after it launches in particular. And then like, we'll get into like, how do you keep it fresh and growing? Yeah. So you'll want to submit a new Google search council. If you have access, um, you'll add your XML sitemap to Google. So that way the search engines understand your site and the purpose your content brings um also like look out for like index indexing your new site this will help also search engines organize information so you can rank for those search results and then kind of after that you just keep going with ongoing um seo optimizations you know figure out figuring out what keywords are working and seeing if those audits have new inputs and recommendations for you for keywords and Make sure you're ranking at the top. Um, continue doing backlink audits. Those are important to make sure you're not on some weird scammy sites. <laughs> um, and then like fixing internal, external errors. And then like those 404 pages of those pop up. Make sure to like redirect those. You make yeah. it sound so easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's lot kind of, of the work. Black- I mean- yeah. Go ahead. I was just going to say, it's just a black hole of stuff. Like, I'm sure next week there'll be a new SEO tool on how to do something. So, 
Well, and I think one of the neat things about Google Search Console, and if you're not using it, you should. It's a very old tool. They've had it for a very long time. I'm actually surprised it hasn't been, you know, it, they kind of revamp it a little bit, but it still actually looks a little bit old when you're in there. Um, but one of the nice things is that's how you connect to a lot of third-party tools that help you monitor, like SEMrush or SE Ranking. Uh, HubSpot uses that on the back end for their light SEO tools. Um, but it also, like, I, I, I hate logging in there and seeing, like, those red bars popping up that are like, these are your error pages. Yep. <laughs> yeah. um, and you can click on it, and you can see exactly what they are. It'll email you tips on, like, stuff that's going wrong. It's kind of cool. It's a, It surprises me the number of clients we have who just don't have one. We're like, hey, can we get access to your Google Search Console? They're like, what? <laughs> like, oh, ask your web person. Yeah, no, we don't have one. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're going to make you a Google Search Console for the new site and start. You do now. Things. It's free. Mm-hmm. It is. It's free, and it's free like information free. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and that's like ninety percent of what you guys do, right? Is you look for information from all these different sources, and then use that info to make everything better. All right. So. If you launch your site and you do everything perfect, will your SEO still go down like immediately when you've got the new site up? Um, It might go down for a little bit, but it should ramp up within like a week, you know, just getting those search engines used to your content and making them think a little. So, I mean, don't be scared for at first, but... Um, it yeah. just takes time. It's the same thing as your your 404s and your 301s. <laughs> like, you might panic for, like, a little bit. But then after that, yeah. no more panicking is allowed. Yeah. And yep. it's all fixable. <laughs> um, and that's the thing. Like, so Google doesn't like drastic changes, right? Um, those can be really difficult for it to digest. But if you make the right changes incrementally or drastically, it might panic for a minute. And then it's like, oh, okay, like, this is where we're at. It's, yeah. It's like if I like if you when you wake up in like a new hotel room and you forgot you were in a hotel <laughs> and you're like, ah, oh, this isn't my bedroom, but oh, yeah. but no, this is a nice hotel. Like, okay, I'm good. I'm good. You calm down. <laughs> um so yeah, and it's a and it's it's pretty. Like the sites are prettier and work better. So all good. Well, and ideally I mean, they work better too. I mean, when we because mm-hmm. part of what we do as well as like build in H1s, H2s, appropriate like meta tags, meta descriptions as we are building the site. So it's not like <clears throat> we are trying to take old stuff and make it work. Like we're, we foundationally from the sitemap stage are making sure that all of the like technical boxes are are checked so that once the site is launched we can move into that like content keyword kind of seo where things get a little bit more um fluid or interesting right like that's when when you and riley really have a lot of fun is when you can kind of figure out like what buckets of things go where um but a lot of what you do during the site build phase is just that technical side of making sure the pages are set up appropriately. Yeah. And I think that's important to op- to point out and just emphasize harder. We don't bring the SEO team at the end. Like they don't, they're not an afterthought. They don't come in at the very end of it, right before it launches to make, to do all the SEO magic. They're there from the sitemap to like page planning, to content nesting, URLs, all of the, like as, as titles are being written, as subheads are being written, they're being involved in those as well. And all of that's getting checks. So by the time we get to the end, I mean, you would say they don't have anything to do, but there's plenty to do at the end still. Uh, but it's really making sure, yeah, making sure all that stuff got executed well and executed right. Mm-hmm. And I think too, I mean, it's important to call out like, Jamie, you've had some really impressive success on just the handful of websites that you've been with us for. Like um, our one that we've seen like, insane page traffic increases in rankings like have shot up just in the last like month and a half from from launch and like the client has even said 
this is really exceptional. We're so pleased with not only the fact that we have a beautiful looking site, but that the that the the metrics and the success of the site has been proven out in page rankings. Yeah, and I think that's really a testament to clients like sticking with it because some of those take it takes a while. Um, though what was really interesting with the last couple of sites, we've really honed this down and our team is so integrated with content, SEO and design because design plays into SEO too, into speed and things like that, um, that we're starting to see that like hockey stick happen um, within that kind of 30 days ish after launch, um, which is really just so cool. And it's, there's nothing happier for me than to have happy clients who are super excited about what the team has been doing. Um, so it's really great as well. All right. I, I, I feel like that's kind of a topic. We did it. Your first podcast. Little podcast Is this your baby. first one? Oh, yeah. I did it. So Jamie can be shy, <laughs> but she does warm up and get chatty. I know. I know. <laughs> All right. Um, and if you want more, you can find her uh, on social media or look at our social media and maybe you'll get some, uh, ASMR lettuce eating from her, yes. her bunny. Yes. We didn't have a little dot appearance. Bunny we didn't. dot. She's there somewhere, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know where Wander. she's at. <laughs> <laughs> Raiding the fridge for that lettuce. Yeah. Well, thank you all uh, for your time today. Thank you to, again, our legions of fans out there listening. Uh, you can always find us um at antidote underscore 71 on social if you have a question you'd like to send our way you can head to ctapodcast.live to shoot us a message uh if you really want to like i don't know but butter or bread that sounds weirdly sexual and that's not what i mean um even better leave us a voice message on our hotline at 402-718-9971 and your question might make it into a future episode. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry just gonna I made that weird. It's okay. I'm gonna leave it <laughs> the way you made it weird and not correct you on what the term is. I think everybody can figure that out themselves. Um, but just a couple of quick things, like definitely with the SEO, do it from the beginning all the way through. Uh, some great tips here that'll be in the notes, um, and you can obviously listen to it again if you want to hear our lovely voices. Um, And then our next episode is going to be the, I have to really look at my glasses here. They're a little dirty. The Milano Torino. Is it truly T-O-R-I-N-I-O? Not Torino. Torino. Milano Torino is our cocktail If you would like to find out for sure. I have no idea what that is. Well, it can't be any worse than the death flip. Well, no, I think the death slip. The death flip is probably our worst (laughs) cut. Well, I think there might be one in there that we've had that was pretty bad too, but um, we'll, we'll hold this one as the worst. Yeah. Um, And then presumably there will be a marketing topic with our Milano Torino as well, or Torino uh, as well. Um, So that'll come up. Or maybe it'll just be us and our clinking glasses. Who knows? It could be. Come on back to find out. Maybe Zach's (laughs) going to show up at the bar in Sioux city and we're just, he's just going to be making us cocktails. (laughs) <laughs> and away we go. So anyway, that's coming up in two weeks. Um, the cocktails will keep getting interesting. The conversation will continue to give you some tips and tricks. Uh, and the tangents, the tangents were few this time, but the tangents will what be a, here. What a missed opportunity. Well. It's fine. <laughs> All right. Thanks for being here. Ciao.